I, I'm very shy underneath and I'm very and sometimes I, I don't have confidence when I interact with people especially in a group especially mm-hmm. and so th- to me that you know to me it's like you know and I'll, I'll see you know a bunch of bloggers um, you know on Facebook and it's like jeez I don't know if I can even do this I don't yeah. know if this is something that you know that you know maybe you know even though I want to do it maybe I, I don't have the talent to do it maybe you know that to me it's just all about being scared shitless and being and not having the confidence to do it yeah and so what is it that you want to do is it more public speaking or is it doing video or blogging or social media like what specifically is it that scares you the most um, definitely um, video and public speaking I mean those, those things that scare me the most but I think you know in this day and age that I, I you know I'm at a point where I want to do it yeah but I'm afraid to you have do the, it. the inner conflict right you have this desire but then there's the conflict yeah. it's like I want to make a million bucks but I want to sleep till noon right <laughs> exactly. or I want to be super successful but I don't want any failure yeah. right that's a conflict right because right. you need one to have you know the other um, <clears throat> You know, you're talking to someone that is been a hundred times worse off in terms of the fear, the anxiety, the shyness. Um, someone, you know, I was, I was, like I said before, I was the quietest person in the room. I was so terrified of that. And um, the way that I overcame it was by facing it. And really that's the only solution to it because you can read all the books and do all the affirmations you want and you, you know, NLP and therapy and all those things help. but as the saying goes, you got to feel the fear and do it anyways. And um, one thing that could be helpful is taking baby steps. Um, you know, I used to, so I used to coach people and I used to coach them to be able to overcome their fears and, com- and develop confidence to actually go out and approach a woman. And that's a huge fear for, for men, right? Men have so much fear to be able to just go and if there's a woman across the room to actually go over and have a conversation you know, rejection and all these different things that come up in their mind. And um, the way that we would do that, we used to do actually three day boot camps where we'd actually, it was 1500 bucks to attend and we had a group similar size, but we would actually go out and we'd actually push them and say, hey, I want you to go up and, and say hi to that person or go up and start a conversation. And the way that we did it was actually a few things. One is taking baby steps, okay? So we didn't create that expectation that you had to go up and get a date and a phone number and all that sort of stuff and start a relationship and get married, right? That's just way overwhelming. All you gotta do is just go up and wish them, you know, we called it adding value, right? So if you just go up and give a compliment and walk away, right? So if I were to walk up, hey, you know what? I just wanna come up and wish you a great day and just walk away, right? Or maybe even just going up, if you just wanna go less than that, just asking for the time, asking for directions, Right, just to get comfortable, just facing that a little bit of discomfort that you have and get comfortable with that. Once you got comfortable with that, you take it up a little bit step further and then you'd maybe turn that into a bit of a conversation and say, hey, I just wanna tell you that you look great today. What are you up to, right? Transition to conversation by asking an open-ended question, right? So, hey, what are you up to today? Awesome, have a great walk away. So again, no very low expectations that you have just to build it up. By the end of the week in this three-day event, we had guys getting phone numbers and dates and, and, you know, just just totally changed their life in so many ways of what, you know, just having the confidence in themselves to do it. And I've seen that happen with thousands of people now. And it's really the same thing with what you're trying to accomplish. And so if it's public speaking, you know, things that I've done with that, and it can also help for video, and because these things all translate to one another, um, maybe it's joining Toastmasters, right? And showing up to Toastmasters once a week and you're in a safe, supportive environment. There's no judgment, there's no rejection, there's none of that stuff. It's a place that you can go and get comfortable speaking in front of a top, uh, uh, in front of a group. And I started doing this when I was 18 and I was terrified to do it. I remember the, when you go to Toastmasters, you have to introduce yourself when you're a guest. And I would just get so nervous just to be able to do that. And then they had something that scared me like crazy, which are called uh, table topics, right? This is where you get up there and they would say, Kenny, uh, I want you to talk about um, a tree, right? You would have to talk about it for two minutes in front of an audience and you know, they're all looking at you whatnot, but it's just a way to improvise on your feet. 
So I did that and I gained confidence from that. All these little baby steps, I became a little bit more confident as time went on. And then before you know it, I could give presentations, speeches. I felt more comfortable with myself. I remember at one point I did uh, something, I, I looked at the Vancouver School Board, they would put on these little workshops in the evening time that anyone could put on. One of them was called Acting for the Terrified. So it's specifically acting classes for those that are terrified <laughs> and, and really shy. So I signed up for like three months of classes in advance. I only made it to the first three and then after, I was just, I had so much anxiety to go back. But those three classes I went to really made an impact on me. Because I, I had to, you know, be in front of a group and they would tell you to act out this thing and you'd have to embarrass yourself or kind of act silly and take on different roles and everything. And it was uncomfortable, but I gained confidence from it. I even did improv classes too. And that all very challenging for me as well. Um, and the same thing goes with video. Starting off small, you know, maybe it's starting off blogging at first. Maybe it's starting off as a podcast. You know, maybe then it's, you know, doing little uh, a Facebook video or Snapchat, right? But it gets deleted within 24 hours. And I think you just build your confidence the more that you do it. And then what happens is you start to get positive reinforcement from that. And you get people that respond in a positive way. You do the Toastmasters or the, you know, and people, great job, and they reward you, they encourage you for that, and you say, wow, great, you know, I'm doing really well. You know, every time someone would approach someone, we'd be the first ones to give them a high five and say, hey, great job. And we'd always celebrate every outcome, good or bad, even, you know, and oftentimes it's never as bad as you think. I, I remember one time I was at the nightclub with a client that I was coaching many years ago, and I was trying to get him to just get out of his comfort zone and actually talk to people and everything. And he said, Stefan, I can't. I'm just so afraid of rejection. I said, great, then we've got to get you rejected. Our goal tonight is to get you rejected 10 times. Because the only way you're going to overcome it is by facing the rejection, right? Is by actually you getting rejected and actually realizing that you're still alive, nothing bad happened, you're going to wake up tomorrow, they're going to have forgotten about you, they're going to forget about you 10 seconds later, right? And just realize that it's not as big deal. And so I had this guy and I actually said, here, listen, let's just try to get rejected tonight, okay? So I'd go up to a group of girls and, hey guys, uh, and I'd act really weird and strange. And they'd be like, hey, how's it going? And I'm like, damn, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get rejected here. And so then I'd go on to another group and then I'd be like, hi, my name's Stefan. Like they couldn't hear me. And they're like, oh, hi. And they're like, they'd, I'm like, damn, it's really, really hard to get rejected, you know? Um, and then you know, he did this and basically realized that it's, it's really hard to, and oftentimes if someone responds in a negative way, it's got nothing to do with you, it's just them being in a bad state or a bad mood, right? And it's really got nothing to do with you. So really, um, I, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's really just a process of, of taking those steps. And if, if, you're, if you're willing to make a big step, you'll accelerate the process of overcoming it. But maybe sometimes it takes baby steps of just, you know, you know, okay, this is what scares me and doing it. And you know, it's okay because this is something outside your comfort zone, right? And it's an opportunity for you to grow. The reason why I do these events and I'm actually why I'm doing these life mastery transformation seminars and everything um, is not really for the money or anything else. There's many other things I can do in my business that can make me more money, it's more passive and whatnot too. I do it because it makes me a bit uncomfortable. So for me, public speaking is something that makes me a little bit uncomfortable, especially putting on bigger events. And often I found that before big events that I would do, I'd be okay, it'd be like the week before, I'd get a little bit, you know, anxiety around it. But I looked at it as a positive, like this is good. Because if you don't feel that, if you don't feel the stress or anxiety, you're not growing. So I was like, great, this means that I'm growing, I'm becoming more, I'm stepping into who I'm really made to be, I'm stepping into my power, I'm owning myself. And then what I found is that when I speak, the best of me shows up. And I just have, tra I have faith and I just trust the process and trust that everything always works out. And it always does. I've got a friend who's a public speaker and I remember one time in Palm Springs, he was going up to speak in front of a thousand people. And I said, great, are you ready? You know what you're gonna say? He said, Stefan, I've got no idea what I'm gonna say. I'm like, how, how can you just go up there? And he's like, you know what, I just trust. I have faith that if it, everything works out, it was meant to. And if it doesn't, that was meant to happen as well. So he releases the attachment of the control of what other people think or things going perfect or things going a certain way. And he just trusts 
that everything will just flow through. And it's actually a lot easier online because you can delete and edit and all that stuff anyways, right? So it's like you can you can really manipulate your videos if you wanted to. How, how and did his talk go? Sorry. I'm awesome. Yeah. yeah, he's an incredible speaker. My friend Wade, actually. Wade oh, Lightheart. Yeah, he speaks at health conferences too. Um, so I would say, you know, set some challenges for yourself. And uh, set some challenges for yourself and the group can help you with that. And uh, little things, celebrate it like crazy. Reward hey, yourself for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you know what, just as time goes on, you just become more and more confident, more comfortable with yourself. I, I look at some of these top speakers and people out there too, I'm giving it, uh, and I'm just blown away how, how comfortable and confident they are with that. I'm giving a speech at the end of this month at the Amazing Selling Machine event um, in front of over a thousand people. And I've done that once before, I was on a panel, you know, but now I've, I've got to give it, I've never spoken, I've, just that one time, but a thousand, two thousand people, yeah, I, I got some anxiety around that, but I'm looking forward to it because that means I'm going to grow. I purposely put myself in situations like that because I know that's what's necessary for you to grow and to be happy and to live a great life and achieve what you want.